All right, what's up, my brothers from another mother? Got a reach request that we're going to hop straight into here from a viewer, and uh, he's a single father looking for some advice. Now, the way that these things work, in case you're not familiar, you go to reach.me forward slash Richard Cooper. Uh, you make your request, submit the donation, and I'll record a video. If you want to keep it uh, for you in your eyes only, I'll just submit it to you. Uh, but whenever they're made anonymous, I record it and upload it to the channel. The best part about that is you get the feedback from the entire community and the comments. All right, let's hop right into it. So this guy is a single father. He says, thanks for taking the time to get back to me. I'm recently divorced here in the U.S., a veteran. I was unfortunately married to a narcissist. She made my life a living hell for the last five years of our marriage. Abuse of all types were rampant. No sex, bitching all the time, financial abuse, and physical abuse. I'm now about seven months post-finalization, and my business is starting to grow again, and I finally have secure enough financial footing to feel like I'm bringing something to the table. I've been following your advice about self-care and doing extensive counseling. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Uh, I'm also a rare breed that actually got custody of my kids. Now, that's a little bit different. Okay. So, uh, it took 10 months and a shit ton of money to get it done, but I did it. Good for you. Congratulations, my brother. Uh, my question I pose is this. You talk a lot about how dating single mothers is a bad idea. He says, shitty idea. Uh, without flip, So what about flipping the scenario? Now, if you haven't seen it, I'll put a card in the top right about my own personal experience with a, theor with a three-year relationship with a single mom. Um, so you can get a little more frame about that. That was a while ago. I haven't done that since. Won't do it again. Uh, I've had a lot of dating experience, though, um, with the single mothers on the sexual marketplace. So I'll explain that in a bit. So he says, what about flipping the scenario? How should I move forward and proceed with dating? I can see a lot of problems you speak of coming up with the single women I've dated since. Um, what kind of added steps should I reasonably take to ensure the security and prosperity of me and my kids moving forward? Thank you for your time and I appreciate your input. Okay, um, let's deal with one of these at a the time. Uh, how should I move forward to proceed with dating? Well, I don't know how old you are, but because you've been married for five years, I'm going to assume you have probably two kids. Um, I don't know the age. I mean, you could be in your 30s or 40s. Anyway, um, I see a lot of problems I speak of coming up in the single women I've dated since. Now, you're going to start, like, the older you get, you're going to start running into more uh, single mothers, and they usually bring kids in tow. So let's just kind of compare the two, because i got a few notes here I made here on my other screen. Um, you were talking about security. So let me just go and deal with that first, because you're talking about prosperity and security of your kids. So um, the thing you got to understand when you're a father and you have children, especially you have a little girl, those are the risky scenarios if you're going to date single mothers because if you get into a relationship with a single mother that has uh, boys or a boy that same age or older as your daughter, uh, the biggest risk factor to little girls as they grow up in a household is uh, non-blood related males. Um, I can't, like I've lost count. It's, it's probably more than both my hands of women that I've met or dated um, that have had bad experiences growing up because their parents divorced and then their mom or their dad brought some woman or man into the house with children from a prior relationship and they were sexually assaulted or abused by either uh, the boys or even the stepdad. So you don't have an issue with a, step, a stepdad, obviously, because uh, you're dating women. So uh, you could run into a potential problem with boys that might violate your little girl. And I'm speaking from experience here because I've seen it. Um, it really messes up girls and they have a hard time dealing with it. And I don't even know if they can deal with it, you know, through uh, tons of counseling. But that is a, a serious potential risk that I think a lot of guys don't consider, especially if they have daughters, if you're going to get into a dating or long-term relationship or blended family scenario with a woman with kids. My advice, um, and this is what I follow for myself, is I, is I won't get into an L LTR with a woman uh, with kids, with the exception of one, uh, which I'll get to in a moment. But that's the first warning that I want to give you. Now, if you kind of contrast men and women, you know, side by side, let's say that you're both single and you've got uh, a child or children from prior relationships. What I usually find on the sexual marketplace is um, women don't seem to have the same financial resources as men do. So they don't bring a lot to the table. They tend to be broke. They've always got problems going on in their lives. They can't fix anything. Their car's falling apart. Um, you know, they're not getting money from their ex or they're fighting over money or they just can't seem to make ends meet. Uh, I know that's not true for all women out there and some women are going to chime in the comments and tell me that's not true. That's great. Congratulations. You're a llama unicorn. But for the vast majority of women you're going to meet on the sexual marketplace, you're probably better off than that. Now, the only time that's not true is if you have a guy that's been completely divorced, raped by his wife. 
um, or ex-wife, and he's living in his parents' basement, or he's moved from his five thousand, you know, square foot custom home that his wife kept, and he's living in some, you know, ratty ass apartment sort of thing. So, uh, but on a balance of probabilities, it seems like what I've seen for the most part, based on my experience, is they're not financially secure, and they bring a lot of baggage to the table. The optics, meaning, you know, the self care portion, is not great. It's in fact fairly low. I mean, if you go to any gym. Uh, probably eight out of 10 men over the age of 30, sorry, eight out of 10 people in the gym over the age of 35 are, are, are men. It's just not women. They're just not taking care of themselves, um, or being attentive to self care in the same way that I see men doing it. Um, and you'll run into women that you just have no idea what you're dealing with. You know, you can go on dating apps and they'll always do in the aerial shots to try to get their neck up or maybe down their cleavage to try to, uh, you know, discourage you from looking at what the rest of them looks like or they try to hide it or they use o older photographs. Um, that's, that's just the way that it is. You know, women have to carry the burden of the childbirth. So it does a number on their body and not all women are attentive enough or go through the motions of self care to take care of that and fix it, to return themselves to where they were at. Not that it's not impossible. You know, we've seen women that have competed in, uh, you know, fitness model competitions after a few kids and a few years down the road. So again, but again, on a balance of probabilities, most guys seem to be in better shapes than women. Uh, contrasting and also comparing the two, um, women tend to also get awarded custody, I believe in something like 80 to 90% of cases. I think the average number in North America, is something like 85 or 86% last time that I heard about it. So ch chances are they're going to be the primary caregiver to children, which means they're always going to have kids around for the most part. Um, so getting into a, a dating relationship or a long-term relationship is very problematic. Um, there's always scheduling issues, babysitters, you know, the, the daddy not do, showing up, or maybe he's a loser. Um, you know, there's, there's so many times I've had to listen to stories about how dad was a loser and he didn't show up. And it's like, you know, why can't he just be responsible? It's like, well, you chose him. All right. So, you know, don't make your problems, my problems, basically with the way that I look at it. So my, uh, my philosophy on navigating the sexual marketplace as a single dad is date, uh, women with no children. And it's hard to do unless you're top shelf, unless you're world-class you bring a lot to the table. You got the six sixes, you know, six feet tall, six figure income, six inches of pants, six, uh, you know, six pack abs. You know what they are. I've talked about them before. Um, a good example of, of, of somebody that's done that is a guy like Elon Musk when he was dating Tallulah Riley. Um, he has four, I think he's got five kids actually. It's either four or five kids, but he's got an entire horde of uh, children, um, from his first marriage. And he was dating this woman. I think she was a model too. She was very attractive. She was about uh, quite a few years younger, at least 10, maybe 15 years younger. And uh, I think they were married twice even, but that's his blue pill condition. And we're not going to talk about that. Is it possible? Yeah. Can you date women on the sexual marketplace without kids and not have to deal with, you know, the broke, the, uh, you know, the bad optics, the custody, uh, custody issues, uh, you know, the baby father uh, drama and all the bad choices they make, everything they have to bring to the table. Yeah, it can happen, but you got to have to, like, you got to come to the table with it a ton. Um, you know, the fewer kids you bring in tow and the better you are at being a man, masculinity, chasing excellence, you know, being able to provide provision and protect, um, you're going to be more spoiled for choice. So you got to take a look at your, uh, SMP or sorry, SMV, uh, sexual marketplace value. A uh, few more points I made over here. What I've noticed with women uh, that are single moms dating is they'll almost always pick their kid's bad behavior over you. So, um, well, watch the card in the top right, and I'll give you a, a great example there. That was my experience. Um, and again, that wasn't just the one. For those of you that are argue, arguing, say, well, it's not just, you know, it's just that one. It, no, it's, it happens a lot. And it's not just to me, it's to a lot of men. Remember, I've coached hundreds of men right now uh, on this clarity platform that I deal with. So um, I've seen enough of it. Um, again, women are sex objects and men are success objects when it comes to sexual marketplace. Men's success and wealth can, can multiply and grow into perpetuity. Uh, they tend to hit their peak. You know, they get into their stride with their sexual marketplace value. And I'll put a card in the top right if you haven't seen that video. Um, around 38, maybe 40, you can push into it. Women, it tends to hit a harder home, a lot younger. They always argue it. You know, what if you take care of yourself? That's fine. But for the vast majority of women, what I've seen, they usually start to decline in the SMP um, early 30s, maybe even 30, you know, itself. Um, long-term relationships. So let's talk about that part because you're obviously looking for a woman in your life, which, uh, you know, you want to question why, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of guys now that have, that have been divorced. Um, 
you know, they're world-class men doing great things and they have a kid or two from a prior relationship and then they fall under the spell of another woman and then they want to marry them. And I want to encourage you to uh, ask yourself if the juice is really worth the squeeze because you're getting into a very risky scenario. Uh, First-time marriages have about a 50% failure rate by year, whatever it is, you know, five, six, seven, let, let's say. I don't know what the exact number is, but a good part of first marriages fail. The percentage of second marriages that fail, and it doesn't matter if you're in a live-in relationship, a blended family, a cohabitating marriage, it's pretty much all the same thing. As soon as you blend families and you start living together, you're basically deemed as uh, married in the eyes of the state. So second time round, the failure rate's about 80%. It's considerably higher. Um, they don't have a lot of data or answers as to why, but if I were to venture a guess, it's because I think women have done it once and they already know what it's like, so it's easy to get out. Uh, and they know that everything in the legal system is written in their favor. So if you're going to vet for an LTR, first thing, read Sean T. Smith's book, The Tactical Guide to Women. Second thing, you're going to vet for women that bring something to the table. They aren't broke. They're emotionally stable. They're not alcoholics. That's the other thing that I've noticed about a lot of women as they get older. They drink gallons of wine. Um, like I'm not talking like, you know, half a bottle or like a glass tonight. I'm talking like a couple bottles or like the big magnum, you know, sort of one. So you got to watch out for those. Um, they have equal to or less kids than you and there's synergy. So, so what synergy means is I've got a daughter that's nine years old. She would have to come to the table with a daughter that's nine years old. A nine-year-old boy and a nine-year-old girl are, are going to have nothing in common. In fact, the nine-year-old boy is a threat to my nine-year-old girl. If he's even older, he's an even greater threat because he's older and he's more mature and he's getting into puberty and sort of thing. So um, if that's something that you're going to consider, you want to reduce the risk factor with the synergy. Uh, she's got kids um, that are of the same sex and roughly the same age as yours. Um, so you want to look for that. Last but not least, before we wrap it up, and I want to thank you for the request, is if you are going to do that, and if you're going to take the risk of potentially getting, you know, going through the divorce machine again a second time, which is 80%, you have to have a prenup and a cohabitation agreement. If you've accumulated wealth as a man, you want to pass it down to your children. You don't want it to go to some other person's children, okay? It's as simple as that. As cold and hard as that might sound, it is a cold hard truth. Suck it up, buttercup. That's the way it is. If that's what you've decided to do and you've decided to take that risk, make sure you've got family law written with a uh, prenup or a cohab agreement in case things do not work out. Um, let's see if I missed anything here. Uh, steps, reasonable, sure, security, prosperity. No, I think I've covered it all. I want to thank you for your request. Guys, if you have any further feedback for this request, post it in the comment below. Um, again, I want to remind you that uh, channel sponsor, good friend Scott Carr now of the Tactical Sewed Com Company. This stuff is infused with pheromones and it's natural. It doesn't reduce testosterone or boost estrogens with uh, fake fragrances and chemicals and stuff like this. And the pheromones are proven to attract women. This itself will not get you women. You're going to have to have some game and follow a lot of the stuff that I talk about. Uh, but worth checking out. There's a link in the, in the pin description below. You get a discount if you use my uh, discount code Cooper. Thanks for checking out the video. Hope you guys have an amazing one. See you in the next one. Peace out.